Hurricane Barrel, Cat 4. It's down from Cat 5, so it peaked with winds of 165 uh, yesterday evening overnight into the morning. And now they've dropped to 155, moving west-northwest at 22. It's really racing at a very high rate of speed. There's Jamaica. It looks like it's going to take a direct hit or close to a direct hit from the storm in Jamaica tomorrow uh, late afternoon going into the evening. Pressure's come up a little bit. It was down in the 930s. Now it's up to 943 millibars, all a sign that something's changing with the storm. And I wanted to show you the way the storm has appearance has changed over the past 24 hours. This was yesterday at this time. Perfectly symmetrical storm was intensifying under a completely unsheared environment. There was no wind shear here at all, and that's what you need to get a storm to look like that, intensifying toward Cat 5 at that time. Today, it looks completely different, doesn't it? That's because there's wind shear coming in from the south and west at about 18,000 feet. That wind shear is disrupting the circulation and weakening the storm, and that process is forecast to continue the next couple of days. Wind shear tilts the storm, disrupts the circulation, and begins the weakening process. And so there's where the storm sits right now. You see the green and aqua colors in here. That's where wind shear is coming across from the south and west. Barrel's now moving into an area of wind shear. That's why it's weakening. It's why its appearance looks so different. And that will continue through that wind shear environment. And we think weakened it toward category one as it heads toward the Yucatan Peninsula. So here's the forecast track from the Hurricane Center hitting uh, Jamaica as we headed into tomorrow night as a cat. 3, down to a 2, down to a 2, down to a 1 as it makes landfall near Cancun. That's going to be Thursday night, Friday morning. Friday afternoon, it reemerges into the Gulf, and at the moment, the forecast track keeps it as a strong tropical storm, perhaps into northern Mexico or south Texas. But remember, statistically, it's just as likely that the storm passes on the northern edge of the cone just as likely as it passes on the southern edge of the cone. So our impacts here will be greatly determined by how far north or south that landfall ends up being. That'll be Sunday afternoon. I think at a minimum we see increased surf, dangerous swimming with rip currents, and an increased rain chance. And we'll have to watch and see if the impacts end up being any greater or lesser than that this coming weekend. Tomorrow, 97 with a 10% chance for an isolated thunderstorm. The extended forecast is hot. Thursday, 97. That's the 4th of July, 99 on Friday. And then we're going to increase rain chances to 30% Saturday and Sunday, beachgoers. And then Monday, Tuesday, next week, it's a 40% chance for scattered thunder showers as moisture from barrel, at least some of it comes in here and begins to give us at least some impacts from the moisture and circulation around the storm. Guys, that's where we stand. Back to you.